Got a big old Seneca. Super C. Let's see, we've got a lot of stuff protected already. We're going to go up there and take a look at what we got. This is a Jayco brand. Look at look. This is our Seneca Super C. Nice machine. Now look at the roof. This roof is an acrylic roof with fiberglass in it. That's what it is. This, I don't know what this, how much this coach costs, but really what this is, is the same stuff you find on a pop-up tent, a pop-up tent, a pop-up camper. Same stuff. So the decking looks pretty good underneath there. Just don't know how glue this is. This probably tear right up pretty easy. We want to see what's going on underneath all this mess as much as we can. So, yeah, I do these intros on here and, uh, by the way, I'm sure it's not sponsored by Dicor because they don't like us because they suck. Put more on, moron! Look at there! Look at this. See that gap in there? How are you going to get some product? You can really mash some product in there. So when the water gets in there, there's a screw right here. That's how this leaks. Same here. I don't like these bell housings. I mean, we don't do any of this type of RV junk anyways because but when we put our boot on here, there's no way it can leak. But you can tell someone already tried to put, you know, yep, more on, you know, and just keep piling it up there, piling it up, and make a moat of Dicor caulking or whatever brand this may be. I'm just, I don't know exactly what brand it is. There's a lot of them out there. They just want to exploit people's ignorance to roof systems so they can sell you more stuff. They go, yeah, put a, put a coating on it and do this and do that. And there's certain ones you can, there's certain procedures that you know we've worked with fiberglass and we've worked with certain roofs like systems like this where we've done like a reseal and um it's not a long term i wouldn't call it a long term effect but uh it it is pretty effective um but anyhow that's another story this here is your antenna as you can see crank up antenna water trickle down here go through that right there and then it gets inside your coach right there and that's how you get water and then you go hey we got a leak yeah that's where it's coming from a lot of times if, if it's not there then these will work loose because these things we just keep going up and down with them uh, we can't put those on so if you're headed this way for us to put a um, a new roof on yours we cannot reinstall this so there's a shaft right here goes down through the ceiling you get your little cranky do that only bites on there about three eighths of an inch. So when I build a curve for this to get it to elevate off of there, off of the roof line, then uh, that shaft will be up inside the ceiling. And some people say, oh, all you have to do is just, you know, put a, a new shaft down inside that. I'm not gonna monkey with a uh, ineffective antenna. We, we're not gonna waste our time with that. But even if I did, I'd still have to get something out here for this to land on. That'd be another problem that I'd have to solve. So, cause not a, I'd wanna try to sit the wrong way and bash up the roof that you're traveling. We've got a uh, radio antenna up here, and uh, you know, same thing. Everything's just been all slobbered and covered over. So there is some damage on the inside. It looks like there was a satellite dish over there. That's what it looks like. Let's see if we can get around there. Uh, yeah, there's the wire short right there. So we'll put that in the boot as well. You can see the platform right there or the footprint shall I say that's what it looks like so I'm glad that's gone this is a coating this is why we don't do coatings see how the coatings they just come up this will all, all peel up what good is it these need to be prepped pretty good if you get a little bit of residue or chalkiness underneath there um, a lot of times they have to be primed so it's not like it's a cure-all and there's different types of Roof coatings, there's silicone ones they've come out with now that are hit the market pretty good, and acrylic ones. And the acrylic ones, acrylic ones, all they do is reflect UV light. That's it. That's all the purpose is. And the silicone is probably a little better than that. But, you know, you can see. So now when water gets up underneath this, it'll travel. And you go, hey, I got a leak down here. But it's really coming from up there, possibly, you know. Maybe not to that extreme, but you know what I'm saying. So that's why we don't, we're really not a fan of coating systems for an RV. Uh, like I said, there are a couple that have come out. We may explore that down the road, but it wouldn't be something that we would use as a cure-all for roof leaks. 
Uh, that that probably wouldn't happen. Look how thick this this is here. I don't know if you can see how much we got. And this is an avid Dicor user. But see see how it's not sticking. It doesn't want to stick to certain materials, and everybody keeps saying, "Yeah, this will work. That'll work. This will work." No, it doesn't work. If it worked, I'd be doing it. That's why I don't like to do spray over roofs because I don't know what's underneath this thing. I don't know what's going on with it. So I have to investigate, find out what kind of roof system it has. And then uh, I want to see if everything else is okay on the other ones we've done. We've checked the trunk lines on the ACs. Uh, which you're noting that it looks like we got two different ones, obviously. So, you know, we want to check all those. We want to check electrical if we can. I've got to see what's up with the shoulder. There's some areas where I can feel that's loose. And there's some areas that feel really, really tight on here. You know, and that's a plus. Um, but I'm still not a fan of this acrylic stuff. But um, if, it, if it was glued down well... And if we were confident there wasn't any issues underneath it, then we would just keep rolling with it. You know, one of the advantages, yeah, they kind of painted this, but we're just bringing the roofing right over. That's all we're going to do. Take the gutter off, and the roofing will go right behind here, like that. So, uh, we're going to try and get to work, take this thing apart. We, uh, overall, it doesn't look like there's a lot of uh, sagging or anything. On some of these bigger ones, we've found that we've had some sagging on the air conditioners, but... But overall, right now, it looks pretty pretty well. So we're hoping this thing go pretty easy for us. We've got a leak that he told us about in the, in the uh, front bunk on this side over here. So we'll explore that. Hopefully, that's just a caulking issue. And uh, this customer here is pretty handy with doing some of the other things himself. So we just got to bring it kind of to where it needs to be and, you know, belay the baton back to him and he can finish it up. So... But if you're starting to try to put, look at these coatings and everything. You can see that right there. That's what I mean, some of it's tight, some of it's not. But uh, that's what I'm showing you. These coatings don't stay down like you, you're thinking. And they're going to come up and you're going to redo your roof again. And it'll be worse. It really will. So yeah, make sure you do some research and find out who's who before you just start slobbering stuff on there. You know, to, to think you're going to solve a problem that may not get solved. Except for thinning out that wallet. If you got a fat wallet and you need to thin it out, then that would solve the problem. Yeah. Well, we got our Seneca roof tore off of here. As you can see, these are uh, little foam shoulders. And they have the acrylic wrapped around it, much like a Coleman pop-up. They have the same design, a Coleman pop-up camper. So they'll have these on there, and that just went around to try to maintain some of the shape of that acrylic. So... We'll put new shoulders on, real shoulders, to make them out of aluminum. We got some rot right here. We're going to obviously mold kill that and get rid of some of the, the bad stuff, if you will. We'll get rid of all that. We're going to redeck the roof anyways, so we'll glue some new decking down. But uh, prior to the new decking glueage, we got some issues here that we need to address. So this is a ply foam roof. That's what it's called. There is a ply, plywood, foam, and if you keep going down, you're going to hit another piece of plywood on the ceiling side. You can actually see right through there. That's your ceiling. That's the foam. That's the roof. It's called ply foam. So if somebody is obviously in there trying to fix or do something. That's why that foam's in there. But uh, so we got a few things we got to do to before we redeck it. But it's not the worst thing we've ever seen, and we will. Uh, Oh, yeah, what was that on the other side? I think I'm going to show you that. Nothing majorly bad. But what they did is a double double whammy. There's your awning, and it's actually still too low. But here's your patio awning. And they put this piece down here. This needs to go up here. That awning rail needs to be up here. So we're going to design that. Then there's a gutter. So this was like a gutter to go to a gutter or something. It, it was a, a, a not not good thinking right there. But this is how the foam went in that I showed you over there. So we're going to end up taking this here. We're going to bridge it up and we'll put another awning rail on top. We'll do that and make it groovy. We're getting rid of that antenna. So we'll put another antenna on there. And then uh, I think we'll get another ladder going. That one's all falling apart anyways. But other than that, get some repairs going. We'll figure out all that nonsense there when we strip the rest of it and they start digging into it. 
troubleshoot we got going over there, but we'll make all those repairs. Then I get a roof on her, and I think that's about it on this this coach. Hopefully, this coach be just a, as simple as what we see, and we don't come up with something else, right? Next time you turn around, you go, "Hey, what's this?" Oh yeah, that's all falling apart. But uh, oh, this one looks straightforward. So hopefully, we can get a roof on it and get it back to the customer. I'm sure they'd appreciate it. Right, right now we got the obviously the roof is stripped. It's clean. We made some repairs down there on the. Uh, we made some repairs down here. There's one here we made. We just tucked that on there. We're gonna redeck it. And we had a little bit right here, it was just a little groove. I don't know, it's kind of squirrely, so we just put that on there. And then we made this repair. And now we're gonna overlay the whole thing. That's what we're gonna do, overlay the whole thing with another sheet. So we um getting ready for that. And then down here where this block is on we've got that's a steel plate that we put under here so when we put the ladder back on all they had under here this is just eighth inch that's all it is it's eighth inch you can see how thin it is right here and this is the screw you put a screw in there I mean how is that gonna really bite into eighth inch it's not I mean that is that's way too small so we need some solid stock there's just foam under here so you just go through the eighth inch into the foam then we got to redo the awning assembly because it's not seated right and that's what we did with this There's another piece of steel that runs all the way down because we're going to put mounts in there we're going to screw them to this this is already glued down and then the other one will come over and lap over it and then we'll put our stud mounts in there with some boots and she's a good to go all the way down so now like i said we're just getting prepped up and ready for the ready for the next layer decking we already got the uh, passenger side. It's already glued and uh, put down. There's the driver's side. And you see all our buffer strips here, our protective strips. And on a coach like this, we really didn't need to put them on here. Uh, but nonetheless, they put them on. They, uh, we built new shoulders all the way down on both sides, obviously. So now we're going to roll this out. Once we roll it out, we'll go over with a big roller, the heavy roller. And then um, start putting in the curbs and getting everything together this was kind of a straightforward type of roof so that's great some of the other ones you run into not so much most of them so it's kind of a relief once in a while to be able to get something we can just get in the shop do a couple of minor repairs and then uh get it out you know like this one over here you'll see that one coming up that's a lazy days that one's a hot mess that one there <laughs> lots of work all right, well, let's let's let us get back to work here, and we'll uh, probably the next clip you're gonna see is where we uh, pretty much have it all together because we're pretty much done with this. You know, once we roll it, cut the holes out for the vents, AC, and so forth, then we mount the curves, heat weld them in, and then um, we also got a an awning rail system that I'm gonna put on here. The way this one was designed, it was on the side. I don't like that. It's got to be on the top. It was impeding the water flow. So uh, we'll show you all that though. All right, what we're doing now is rolling out. Get blurred in there, bum blur. Blurred or blurred. Just rolling out with the big roller. That's what we're doing. Then we cut the vents. We're gonna cut the, the holes for the vents, AC and all that jazz, skylight. We're gonna rock and roll. We're rocking and rolling. It's gonna get done. Well, we are done with our Seneca. There's our logo. Shows you the month and the year we installed the roof. You get the couple of stands in the back to help balance the air conditioner. Got a, this is all boogered up. We tried to clean it up because of how much they had, so we just added some extra really caulking on there to just kind of take away some of the sin that was there. You get the boots all filled up in here around the, the ladder. There's so much slobber that was on here. Tried to do the best we could to try to clean it up, but some of it turns into a big adventure to clean it. But uh, we get our counter flash up underneath the AC right here. So the purpose of that piece right there, when the water comes down, as you know, obviously as you even if you're traveling, but if that was not there, there's a foam gasket up inside there. So the water would trickle down. Now you're driving, all the wind's blowing it into that foam gasket. We don't want that. So we put this counter flash. It'll come down, and when it drips, it would drip below. This is counter flash on, on the curb. So it would drip below that and wash out. All of that's all heat welded. All of this, all heat welded. Heat welded, the plumbing. Now plumbing cap, if we take this off, 
if a tree branch happened to pop it, it's all sealed. All that would do is just go down into the holding tank. So, the uh, you got this heat welded here, and then what we did is we raised this up. The awning it really needs to come up. The whoever installed this awning, it needs to come up more. This is not the proper installation. But that being said. Uh, we want to be able to let water get behind there and we want to be able to get down into the gutter and drain properly. The way they had it, it was kind of smashed into here and it was just all twisted up and everything. So we had to take one piece out to get this to sit right. You may be able to get a, a longer um, guard to wrap around the whole thing. That's possible. But uh, that's the best design we could think of to be able to get the water to shed off like it should. So you see we got the same... Uh, bases uh, the legs uh, stands on the back of the AC over there another plumbing so we're like I said we are done we are done at uh, this uh, TV antenna everything again is all heat welded we got two strikes of caulking on here there's two strikes everything is all doubled up and uh, we also put in some insert trim right around in here because there wasn't any so we added that in there and you see when we tried to clean it up earlier, this is from the old stuff. That's what that is. We try to do the best we can. So, the, uh, But otherwise, she's uh, ready to rock and roll. What we did over here in the shower, it's pretty common that these skylight lenses, what will happen is you'll get condensation on there. And then when the sun comes up, when you do get condensation, and it doesn't matter what it is, but you're going to have condensation on the outside, and you're going to have it on the inside, unless there's a thermal barrier to prevent that. Uh, much like your windshield, you come out, you got some condensation on there, you usually have it on the inside as well. Um, but that being said, what happens is when the sun comes up, it will evaporate what's on top. But what's in the inside, it will not evaporate it at all. And then what it does when it does condense, it starts to roll down and follow the shape of the skylight lens. And then it'll hit the ceiling panel. And when it hits the ceiling panel, the ceiling panel will wick it up. And a lot of people think, hey, I got a leak. You have to watch it. That would be a chronic leak. It's not something that's going to show up right away. It would be something that would show up probably months, you know, down the road, maybe even years, you know, a couple of years. And then finally you're going to notice, hey, my ceiling around the skylight is looking soft. And that's really the reason for it. So what I did is uh, I designed this. That's a solar fan, and that's an intake right there. So now when the sun comes up, that solar fan will kick on, and it will have a constant draw of air to keep flowing and pull that condensation out so there's no moisture issues so uh, that's what we designed there uh, you get, we got our refrigerator so like I said everything's pretty much all set we're done we're ready to rock and roll uh, we're ready to go and then um, what I'll do is show you how uh, got a little kid here I like to show I want to thank uh, the customer for bringing this in we really appreciate the work we appreciate you know people coming as far as they do for us to do the work too and we don't want to take that for granted so I want to make sure I say thank you um, so this is all the stuff I'm getting out of this box this is a care package right here so and this is the actual product this is a 60 mil commercial grade TPO there's our telephone number if you need it rvroofinstall.com so this is a 60 mil and on the back you're going to see all these little squares that's the mesh that's built into it it helps resist against uh, hail helps resist against tree branches things like that but you know there are things that could possibly puncture it and if the roof does get punctured then uh, we left with some patches and we also left with some product so this is uh, a Chemlink brand Duralink 50 is what we like that's what we use um, some of this stuff if you want to buy it I'm sure you can go online and buy it we go through a commercial warehouse I'm just showing you all the stuff that I got in this box that we left a few pens threw them in there uh, key tag with an adult beverage opener and then uh, so now for instance you do get a tree branch that hits the roof if it does then you can and you want to seal it up even if it's raining out you can get up here and you want to push this into that hole and you're going to go around in a circle like that so now you've got it all loaded and up underneath there then just squeeze it together it'll stop the leak okay so it'll be done now you need maybe the next day it's a little drier that we wouldn't call that a permanent fix so, and I wouldn't even call this tape a permanent fix, but it would be better than the caulking. So now what you would do is take your tape right here. This is just roof tape. It's got a TPO coating on it. What you're looking over here, that's butyl. And they, it's got a butyl backing. That's all it is. So what happens is you're going to put this down over the, the hole. Trace around with a pen. 
once you trace all that then what you're going to need is some primer and we even leave the primer in there so you take the primer a little brush and you're going to go all inside that ink line and then you're going to be over the ink line as well about three eighths of an inch but you're going to be inside that ink line you're going to peel the backing off of this and the sticker down so you should see your ink line around the perimeter of your tape you're going to go over onto the tape and you're going to go onto the roof with a little bit more primer you just want to make sure it's primed then you're going to take your caulking once it's all dry that once the caulking is all dry then you go around you just put a thin layer around there so the purpose of that that butyl right there and a lot of people say ah it's no big deal they like turn a bond and this all you have to do is just peel and stick it no it doesn't work that easy a lot of stuff does not want to stick to certain membranes but especially TPO so what's going to happen is the UV light will start working on the butyl and then eventually this tape is going to come loose so the purpose of the caulking going around the perimeter is really just to protect that butyl edge that edge right there from sunlight getting in there that's really all it is so if you know you needed to get a patch if you bring it back here we patch it for free but here's the product it's this is a Carlisle TPO I write it on here because they are not compatible some people think you can just get any which one but you can't so if you found somebody like a, a, a contractor that was doing a, a roofing contractor commercial roof contractor and you brought it to their shop if they didn't have Carlisle then and they had we'll say GAF or they had Firestone or somebody else they're not compatible so that's why we leave this and you can heat weld this right back on here this is a permanent patch so that's how all that works it's uh I'll put some of this back then what we do you know I'd like to see this coach come back in about 30 days I say 30 to 60 days I want to just see it back so I can take an initial look at it you know if we get another Seneca in here uh, I want to make sure it's uh, the the other Seneca is going to rack it's going to twist it's going to flex differently than this one I want to make sure we're addressing all the problems with this but that being said some folks say hey I can't come back well if you can't well I'm going to show you how to do an inspection and if you notice something you know you need to bring it back but I would hate for someone to say hey I got an issue I said well if you brought it back we could have resolved it instead of it turning into a big hot mess so um, then after that you come back once a year the way you would wash the roof you just use some regular dish soap it'll come up simple green just something easy I wouldn't use anything like a, on an orange type cleaner I wouldn't use that because some of the dyes will stain the roof so just just something simple you could run through a truck wash and have them pressure wash it you can pressure wash these roofs so what you would do is you would take your this is a checker tool we're leaving that in the kit as well what you do is you just slide that down see how it slipped off that means that's slick so that, that means that's a good weld so we'll say it just poked in there a little bit and if it was a concern then what you do is you take your primer and you're gonna well first off you're gonna clean all the debris if there is any up underneath there but you're gonna wash it anyways with some you know acetone or if you don't have acetone most women have nail polish remover that'll work that's acetone you can just go in there and just clean that little bit out and then you can put the caulking on there after you put the clean it out put the primer then put the caulking and that's how easy it is but you want to go around everything you want to make sure it's nice and tight and if you see something all you do is just real simple just clean it prime it and caulk it and then when you bring it back we'll clean it out and we'll make sure it's all done right but that's why we want to see it I always err on the side of caution I think someone would be a fool to think hey it's done that's it never have to touch it the rest of my life. there's no such thing as that it just isn't that isn't the way it is so with anything so change your oil in your car there's everything requires a little bit of maintenance a little at least a little bit of uh, inspection to make sure everything's doing okay so well we really appreciate again uh, the, the customer bringing it to us and uh, we appreciate y'all watching please keep in mind these are not DIY videos and also we do not quote on social media so if you're watching this you know a lot of comments come across how much this costs how much that costs we don't quote because there's a lot of variables and it's hard to just say oh this is going to be that or whatever but like I said we don't quote on social media and the reason why I say these aren't, if you get a tip out of this, great, awesome, but they're not DIY videos because there's, you can see the way these are videoed, there are some underlying stuff that we do not, um, you know, we don't video every single aspect of what we do, and I don't want to steer anybody wrong, and I don't want people getting upset because they didn't know the process. So uh, we appreciate you watching. We'll see you in the All next right. one. All right. Pardon our parking area. The uh, owners are trying to fix our driveway. But what I wanted to show you is that patio awning. There is that cover that comes over. 
and it bugged me. It bugged me so much. My OCD was just, it wasn't making and the fabric was showing. I didn't like it. So I got another cover to go on there. And what I did, and I thought it looks pretty, pretty darn cool. And I, if you're looking at it, you'll see a, a white stripe up there. We got the white one. So we put the white up there so it will match the roof shoulder. That's what we did. Hopefully that sun isn't so bad on there. They'll go around the other way. Yeah, back up, I don't know. Not a good videographer here. But see, if you look at it, you can see where the black stops and then it turns white. That's not the roofing, but it looks like the roofing. See? Man, that looks real nice. I like it. Let's see if I can zoom up a little bit on there. So that's what we did. That's my OCD kicking in. I didn't like it. I said, I gotta fix it. So that's what we did. All right. Thank you for watching. That's our Seneca. Let's see, we got a, uh, all the coaches that come out with a care package. This is our care package right here. See if I can zoom this in. We got a license plate right here if you want to put that on. We've got, this is a piece of patch. It's an emergency patch in case he got a tree branch to come down and if he had to uh, patch it. Now this is a hot patch. This is the one that we would use much like, much like this one around here. It's just the same material, but so that would have to be welded in. However, in an emergency, if you had a hole, and we'll say whatever, right here, if you saw it in there, you take this and shove it in that hole, and you go squirt, 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 all around in a circle, like that, and load it. Then you squeeze it, it'll bubble up. That's done. This is a moist-secured product. That's what we use. We use all, all Chemlink products. This is Duralink. That's what we use. So that'll seal it. But then, we also left a couple of patches. So the way you want to do your patching, put that there's so an all the way. The way you want to do your patching, and we left a couple in here, is you would put center it over your your hole. Once you get it centered, take a pen and outline this. You want to outline it with a pen. Now you got that. Just set that aside. And we left. There's a little bit of primer right here. You're gonna need that primer. And I might as well empty everything out of this thing. Here's a brush. So now. You want to go beyond, beyond the ink line. You want to go beyond that, maybe three eighths of an inch or so. So you're going to be doing this on 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 your ink line. Then you want to do the whole thing here. So you get all that all the inside the ink line, and then about three eighths over the ink line. You're going to take your patch. You're going to peel the back. This will peel. This film will peel right off and you line it up and I usually reach up underneath and then I take my other hand and I kind of pull it this way it keeps it nice and smooth now you've got your ink line there you got your primer out here you take your brush again and go over this just like that okay go over here because it won't bond to this that's the purpose of the primer nothing's going to bond to the TPO unless it's primed so once you get that then you come back with your product and you can put some caulking around there and that's going to be a pretty darn good band-aid um, now, if, if the customer really feels he needs to have a hot patch put on it, that's why we left this. Uh, we don't want someone to just go to a, if he can't come back here, we do them for free. If he can't make it here and he's somewhere else, he's like, yeah, that really needs to be put on there, you cannot interchange these materials. So some people think you can take, uh, this is a Carlisle membrane right here. Now Carlisle does make a couple other products, but it has to be the same Carlisle product. But you couldn't take, for instance, GAF and put it on there. You couldn't take um, Genflex and put it on there. You can't do that. They're two totally different companies and they're two totally different products. I mean, they're still TPO. But it's kind of like Ford and Chevy. Yeah, they're both a car, they're both a truck, but they're not compatible. You're not swapping parts on them. So it may seem like it'll weld on there. And I've had people at supply houses tell me, oh yeah, 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 we don't have any of that, but you can use this. You can't. Um, it's There's enough chemical imbalance in each product where they won't they're not compatible so that's why we put that in there just in case so you got the primer you got that you got the brush you got some caulking and then uh, the caulking uh, we like to see these come back in 30 days okay we 30 to 60 days for an initial inspection after that it's annual now if the customer says well you know I want to inspect it myself we want them to go along put a little friction on here to uh, get it warmed up and then it, it this is going to stay tight anyways but in the event he found something hey yeah it looks a little loose or whatever you can put a little bit more primer on there and you can use that to just give it a little love on especially around the corners uh, you can go around the corners and everything like that if you had to so um, that's why we put all that in there let's see we got a magnet for the maybe on your hood of your stove 
Got a couple of pens here. Got a fancy dancy key tag with a beverage opener. We can't say beer, it's a beverage. So this is a checker tool. So this is used to check the joint, the welds. You go along like this, and if it pops in there and you find a little hole, we'll say, say there was a tiny bit, if you did, well, that's what you check for, and these things gonna move a little bit. So if you did, then again, you can take the primer, take a little brush, put it all in there, take the caulking, and you're done. Okay, that'll hold it so we can get a look at it and you know make sure everything's all set. But like I said, that's what we like to see. Uh, it come back in about 30, 30 days. I like to see them, but 60, all right. But I still want them inspected because I don't want to have a little tiny problem turn into a big problem and then an upset customer. So um, we got all of that there, and that's. Let's see what else we got here. Here is a sample of our product. This is a 60 mil, commercial grade. And if you look real hard enough, you can probably see the little, see if I get the angle of this light in here from the shot. You can see these little squares. That's, there's a mesh built into this, which gives it its strength. So that's where you, it'll resist hail damage. It'll resist uh, tree branches. So it's really hard to poke through this. It, really, it truly is. You'd have to have something really hard and sharp to really get it. But if you had a big enough tree branch, that could possibly happen. So we get all that. And then we can get another key tag and everything in here. So. That's that's the gist of it. So all the customers they get they get these here, and we got an emblem on the back. There's one of our emblems here that we put on on the back, and that's about it. So we leave all this with the customer. So Mr. And Mrs. Customer, you know they at least they have all this stuff handy in case of an emergency. So we want to make sure everything stays tight and everything. You got all the products you need, so on. So obviously if you have any issues, there's a telephone number. 423-475-7663. Um, keeping all this in mind, these are not intended for DIY. I just simply don't have the time to answer all these DIY questions. And the other thing is, I don't know what you're dealing with. I don't know what you have. I don't know what products are on there. And I have guys ask me all the time, what can I use for this? What can I use for that? And, and I don't want to steer anybody in the wrong direction and find out, okay, well, you got silicone on your windows. What can I use to clear, do my windows? Well, you're going to have to dig all that out. You have to dig it all out. Nothing sticks to silicone. Silicone doesn't stick to silicone. So you really gotta clean all that out. And if you don't know if you have silicone, and some people don't know the difference, they can't just go up there and feel it and go, yeah, that's silicone, or, or it's just a urethane, or it's a terpolymer. I mean, there's a bunch of different products out in the market now, but the biggest one is being the silicone. And some products kind of simulate in a, in a touch. You may think it's uh, silicone, but all that has to be, like I said, it has to be removed. Uh, but again, that's why I, I try not to get into advising and I just don't want anybody to be upset But honestly, I really don't have the time at the risk of sounding like a jerk. I'm not trying to be I'm trying to do a good job, but you can imagine how many emails and you know, we get uh, from You know with questions and also questions on our channel keeping this in mind as well We don't quote on social media if you want a quote on yours You'd have to give us a call again 423-475-7663 um, you can do that and then or you can send us an email even if you wanted to at contact us at rvroofinstall.com so uh, that's about it everything's done uh, I think the customer just showed up so we're going to uh, get him coupled up here and he may even want to take a glance at the roof and otherwise we're good to go so we appreciate y'all watching if you like the video give it a thumbs up um, what that does, from what I understand uh, from the algorithms, what it does is if somebody's looking for information on RV roofs, then, you know, this video or other videos will pop up. That's what I'm guessing. So if you want to subscribe, well, we put these up uh, pretty often. You can go through a lot of the other uh, videos we have. Some, uh, I'm trying to think of some really good ones that we did that were just a hot mess. Uh, there's a Georgetown we did, I think a couple years ago, that Georgetown, we did the whole ceiling, took the whole ceiling, and roof out and rebuilt that whole entire thing. There's a Montana that's up there. There's a, uh, earlier from years ago, maybe five years ago, there is a Siesta. And you can, that was roof we did. And the guy who did that roof put two roofs on, but the first one on messed it up, but the second one on messed it up. And uh, you'll see that hot mess they did. They did not know what they're doing. So keep that in mind. There's a lot of guys out here on YouTube that'll say, hey, uh, you can do this, you can do that. Um, there's a couple of so-called experts that are out there and I watched one of their videos or a few of them and I just shake my head because I know things are going to leak and I know some of the stuff they've done they have to have leaked because there's just no way things go together like that so if they're not 
I don't think they mention that, but uh, on their video, I haven't seen them mention, hey, yeah, we had a leak, we had to fix it. But, um, you know, if we have any issues, obviously, we want the customer to come back immediately. Come back immediately and let's stifle any any leaks at all. But, uh, you know, we that, that's like almost unheard of. Uh, and I'll be honest with you, some of the biggest problems we've had are with these skylights, with them fracturing, and that's why we do them differently. Um, I don't, some of these ones, like I said, they're manufacturer's defects on a lot of them. But that being said, especially if you had a cambered roof, if you had a roof that had just a little bit of a camber, that wants to lay down flat, like a, just a flat piece of glass. And if you just make this end tighter and that a little tighter, now it's got that little stress going on it. And it only needs a little bit of stress to crack it. So that's one reason why we don't put any screws on them anymore. So, and if they come back for inspection, we take all the screws out and then what we'll do is just load them. Because the product that we use underneath there, it's not coming up. It won't come up. You, the, if you have to replace that, you're going to have to rip up that whole entire lens, and you're going to have to. It's not coming up. So, well, anyhow, like I said, I appreciate y'all watching, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.